Okay, we're breathing deep. We're loving our lives. We are thinking about how infinite everything is. We're thinking about the sun coming up. We're thinking about the cosmos, the infinity of possibilities, of loved ones, of how we can do things. We're in a good space. We have silver linings coming through the dark clouds in the world right now. This is me asking Andrew Sawicki, and this is me asking you listening and or watching. And if you are watching, you can see the bone spider right now, which I do think is important. And this is me asking you, <gasps> how are you feeling? Welcome to Sweet Boys episode 18. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Are we going to be the chaotic tornadoes of a mess that we usually are this episode? 64% chance yes. Or are we going to be nice and clean and linear and wonderful and give you a good intro? Andrew, take it away. That was the most intro-y intro ever. <laughs> All right. I no. would just be repeating your work. That was great. Okay. Series of what we're going to talk about. I personally would like to talk about this episode. How things are getting better, I feel. World's still not quite there, but we're getting there, and I'm feeling it personally. I'd like to talk about that. I'd like to talk about how yesterday I felt like an absolute bag of damn flour. Andrew may or may not have brought us a little sweet treat to sample. I'm not sure. I think he alluded uh, to something. Did you? Today's episode, yeah, Garrett's going to give us a rundown about his little... Uh, flower day. <laughs> Flower. Flower day. Garrett said he felt like a bag of flour. Garrett yeah. apparently thinks that's a phrase that's uh, used around very commonly. I'm feeling like a bag of flour Never today. Heard of it. Never heard of well, it. Well, I bet people have said it a thousand times today. So he's going to explain that. And uh, yes, I reached out to the old IG Insta community for some, some thoughts. That's... I've never known how to spell that word. Really? No, I always mess it up. I can't spell weird, Rest miracle, restaurant. or thoughts. Restaurant, yeah. Restaurant, weird, miracle, or thoughts. Out the door. What about can't... Definitely. D oh, no, you can't do that one either. Okay, so the list just goes on. It just on. goes on. And on. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, no, I was gonna say, I, uh, yeah, reached out uh, to the to the sweet 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 zone. Oh, sweet sweet sweeties in the sweet zone. Oh, and I said, let us know if there's anything that you want us to try, any topics you want us to talk about, and uh, I got screen grabs, brother. Oh. I screenshot some of the replies. Thanks oh, for everybody God. replying. Uh, we're going to pick some some things out of the suggestions jar. Oh, remember the little... Um, <laughs> I have no idea what we're actually doing. No, no, no. Who does? Who does? Who I does? don't know. Uh, you remember those little things that you put the quarters in and you try to get the teddy bear with the little claw, that come, the claw machines? Yeah, the claw game, yeah. Uh, come on. They can't scam children and get away with it. I, I don't think I ever won from those, and I've probably tried dozens of times. <sighs> I think... Why that? Why'd you bring that up? Because you said we're gonna pick from a, a mix, and uh, I, I thought about it. Yeah, well, for anything like the claw game, we're gonna be talking about a whole lot of nothing. Do you see me tuck my little shirt in? It's good. Thanks. Good. <laughs> um, all right, what are we doing here, Garrett? All right. What I was going to say is, yesterday I had one of those days that we've all had before, to where I just knew that I wasn't going to do anything. Bags of flowers sit in dark cabinets, brother. They sit in dark cabinets alone and unaccessed and that's how I felt yesterday I saw this and, and, and by the way it's not a negative thing I, I know it sounds sad it really isn't I'm feeling really really good right now about life but yesterday I had just finished editing a video shout out to anyone who watched my uh, 90s room video god bless you and Andrew thanks for your sweet words Andrew gave me a compliment a compliment on Instagram um, about it and uh, I wanted to say uh, yeah that I was I had just finished editing that video and I was feeling so spent right so I had this day the next day after I posted uh, of just uh of just of just being in bed and knowing that I wasn't going to budge, dude. I didn't budge. And not just that, the night before we had our friend Matt over for his birthday, right? Had him over for some, you know, drinks and food and stuff. So Andrew, we ordered what? Come on, brother, what did we have there? We had we had vegan pizzas sitting around. We had guacamole. So I woke up the next day and I was like a rat yeah, all day. It was bad. I felt the same exact thing. I don't know. I <laughs> we're in the same place. Well, but do you know what I mean when I say rat? I mean, dude, I didn't I didn't go out side and I didn't um I know this sounds so sad I don't mean it like that like I woke up and ate the pizza off the floor um I ate the guacamole even though it was like so brown <laughs> I ate like the cookies <laughs> I just was like going around like I'd go into my room and I was like watching Disney plus and then I'd like come back and like just like <laughs> eat things in my bed oh I did do a yogurt that was the only thing that I ate that probably wasn't a problem you ever have those days what are those days born of to where you're just like I'm not doing a thing today are you a bag of flour or are you a rat dude both I'm a, I'm a rat inside of a bag of flour who just nibbled on too much flour and he doesn't want to move. Okay. You know? So today, I walked outside in the sunshine. I absorbed some sun, and then I came here. I've been making smoothies. I know. I'm really proud of you for that. <laughs> yeah. But you're going to ask me what I've been putting in the smoothies? Yeah, oh, yes. I will ask you what, you're gonna, what you've been putting in the smoothies. Okay. So, for the smoothies. Yeah. Um, I put a fruit and stuff. Oh, nice, Andrew. Hey, you doing okay over there? Um, <laughs> every every put, podcast I, listener right now, just like, wow, what next? 
<laughs> what, what else did he do? I put, um, bone spiders looking at me weird. Oh, yeah. Bone spiders on my lap. I'm sorry if anyone's a little spooked out by him, but he doesn't want you to be. We should do a podcast in a sauna and just see what happens. Because I feel like it's warm in here and I feel like it's making my brain not turn to mush. Yeah. Something in between mush and the brain. It's like... Apples, uh, applesauce. Mm. Mm. No, that's, I think, past mush. Mush is more like mashed potatoes. Oh. You're going past it. You more liquefied. Yeah. I mean less liquefied than mashed potatoes. I mean like yogurt. Yogurt. I feel like my brain's turned to yogurt. What kind? If Greek. It's Greek. Wait, no, no, but the, is, plain, there, is there a fruit? No. Really? No, no. And Not don't even. you dare don't you dare think that there's fruit at the bottom. I will throw don't. my microphone somewhere. Uh, but but what about uh, vanilla flavor? Not even a light vanilla. Let me tell you what I did one time. Okay. Let me talk to you about vanilla real quick. Okay. okay. No, no, no. <laughs> let me no let me the title explain. of this, let's talk about vanilla. <laughs> I mean a bag of flour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bag of flour versus the rat. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I felt that's all I have to say is I felt like a friggin' slug yesterday. So a slug and a rat in a bag of flour. Oh, I get it. That's yeah. how I feel after I eat Panda Express and I stay up all night. This episode's then- sponsored by Panda Express. <laughs> 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 Just kidding. It's not at all. This episode's actually sponsored by Green Chef. Oh, it is. Thank you, Green Chef. Love you. And that is the opposite of feeling like a slug because it makes you feel good. Sorry. We'll talk about that later. What was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I made like sausage for like some spaghetti or you something. You made sausage? Well, you know, you put it on the on the on the on the uh, oven. <laughs> oh <laughs> on god. The stove, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you you, you chop it up. Oh, I, you weren't like using like a meat grinding no. machine. Oh. I meant I I prepared it. <laughs> it's just <laughs> Listen, all I'm saying was okay. I wanted to eat biscuits and gravy. Oh, biscuits and gravy are great and we will tweet that on the Sweet Boys Twitter account. Here's the thing. Yeah. I was uh, there was some there was some leftover sausage and I've never really made biscuits and gravy before yeah. but I know all it is is like some type of sausage type thing yeah with a little bit of flour and then milk and then the grease of the sausage and the flour combined to create like a paste. <laughs> this sounds like someone describing my personality. <laughs> <laughs> and then the milk comes in and yeah. sort of dilutes it and makes it edible, kind of like me with you. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? We level each other out. Oh, that's true. Because I'm like, ah! And you're sometimes like, ah. Yeah, exactly. And in the middle, you get the Sweet Boys podcast. Oh! That wasn't a dig on you. That was a dig on both of us in such a way where we both appreciate each other. After we shoot this episode, I want to dig for some uh, fried mozzarella sticks is what I want to dig for. (laughs) The thing is, is that I used to bury so much stuff as a kid. I still do. I bury a lot of stuff. It's like, do you ever do that? You know what I mean? Like when I, like secrets? You're trying to bury my story about this gravy right now. Oh, I'm sorry, Andrew. Go on. Well, it's fine. You can bookmark that. Okay. I actually don't think I want to return to it because people are going to be like, what do you, what do you bury? And I'll be like, I don't want to talk about it. <sighs> yeah, you bury weapons and just, stuff. Just yeah, like not- <laughs> knives and stuff. Yeah, but it's just, believe me, they're kept in boxes and they're very deep underground. And when I need to access them, I have them all over the United States. Right. But you understand the implications of burying a weapon though, right? No. You don't understand that that probably wouldn't be something that you'd want to tell somebody. Like I buried a knife yesterday. They would say, why did you bury a knife? And I would explain it thoroughly to them. And I would hope that they would love me and explain that I have a very good reason for doing it. Because in a post-apocalyptic scenario, if we're in San Diego, because we had to take like a weird train there that was still accessed because we found some fuel in it. I said, hey, don't worry about it. We're covered because I buried a knife in 2007 right under this tree next to this Radisson Hotel. And I won't tell you where the tree is. So don't try to ask in the comments. Someone could take a metal detector there. <laughs> I'm serious. They'll like never the- find the tree. <laughs> there were so many. And they don't know which 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 hotel I'm talking yeah. about. It wouldn't get that many likes. <laughs> but <laughs> they'll never find the tree. I love it. It's a pretty good tweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to just scratch my cheek. <sighs> I put the sausage in the pan, added a little bit of flour, because yes. I had flour. The Funny, biscuits and gravy. It all comes full circle. In a weird way, I put you in the pan. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes, yes. But here's the thing. Yeah. You need to add milk. Did I say this already? You need no. to add milk to dilute. To dilute. Remember? Yes, uh, yes, yes. Friendship go, 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 analogy. Of course I remember. Because the grease and the flour and the milk combined to make the gravy, which is a fun fact, by the way. Dude, so, if we if we had a biscuits and gravy party. Vegan options for vegan friends. Oh, vegan options for vegan friends. Oh, just some broccoli. Well, no. Oh. Vegan biscuits and gravy. Probably oh. Would be pretty easy to do. Oh, that sounds so good. Yeah. Anyway. Here's the, here's the twist. Yeah. I was excited about this because I, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, yes, yes. There was a leftover can of biscuits. You know, the ones that you pop open and like cause it like a little minor heart attack. Oh. Yeah. Oh my God. Wait, I, I'm not getting off topic, even though I am confidently, but do you remember those little Halloween cookies um, that have like, so yeah. they come in like a roll and then they have like a little the ghost. Pump, yeah, yeah. Oh my. I, I'm thinking of a pumpkin. Now right? they have ghosts, they have pumpkins, and I've even seen a haunted tree. But those <laughs> cookies to me are the most important thing that's ever happened in the history of the United States of America in terms of a product that you can buy in a grocery store. But I'm, I'm. Ah, ah. <laughs> Sorry. 
There was leftover biscuits from when my parents were there. That's why I made the gravy, because I said, what am I going to do with these biscuits unless I have gravy? So then I made the gravy to match the biscuits, because I didn't want to throw the biscuits away, and they were going to get expired. Yeah. So listen to me. Listen to me, Garrett Watts. Listen to my words. I'm just, I am. <laughs> so I'm making the gravy for the biscuits. Okay. And I go, all I need to do now is add in the milk, dilute this whole situation, yeah. and boom, I got gravy. So yeah. I pour in the milk that I had. What kind of milk? Well, I have almond milk. Oh, you used almond milk and biscuits and gravy? Here's the issue, though. Yeah. That might have been fine, but it was... What? Vanilla almond milk. Oh, no! <laughs> Vanilla biscuits and gravy? <laughs> Dude, I would... Okay, that's something that I would go, oh, man, I think I messed this up, and then eat the whole thing for, like, the next three days. The last thing, and I realized, because I was, like, mixing it together, and yeah. then I, like, tasted it, and I said, huh... This tastes terrible. Are you serious? And then I looked at the milk and it said vanilla. vanilla. And then I started oh, thinking no. about like, well, what is milk, regular milk? There's a sweetness to it. And then I just got really confused. Yeah. And then I just gave up. I can't make anything. My mom can make spaghetti. Oh, Andrew, how about the uh, the 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 uh, the the, Insta the Instagram questions? Oh, right. Andrew asked, right. Uh, Andrew asked uh, Instagram questions to Instagram. Uh, Instagram.com questions, Instagram.com mm -hmm. topics, topics, Instagram responses. Now it's time to read them. Screenshots of the Instagram responses, screenshots of the Instagram responses. So, yeah. now it's time to read the Instagram responses. We heard. I said, let us know if you have any suggestions. Just what did people say? General suggestions. Yeah, what'd they say? Thousands responded, actually. It's really? Like, yeah. Thanks for everybody who responded to that. Uh, at Sweet Boys Podcast on Instagram. And you can uh, weigh in. And oh. I ain't talking about before the boxing match, making sure that you're the right weight class so that you can fight. Because if you're not, they won't let you fight. Relatable. Okay. I'm just going to go down the line here. Okay. And I am just going to rapid fire this, so I don't think I'll probably say the person who did it. Thank Wait, you. Should, should you say the username? Um, I could try. All right, let's see here. Backup underscore love Ooh. with two E's. That sounds like a cool, like a, a song title from like on an album that's highly anticipated and it's spelled just like that. Right. And it's like, all right, you gave it a shot. How does it go? Uh, it, it starts like, boom, 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 and there's like a lot of silence and then boom, 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 silence. And then backup underscore love. A. Backup underscore love. Back up, uh. underscore love, oh, 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 back up, underscore love. I got a little bit of love in the back of my truck. Got a little bit of love and I'm going up, F word. Little bit of love and I'm going to sing it loud. Got a little bit of backup love. I thought there was going to be some element of like, we were together moving forward and then things got rocky. So we put it in reverse. Back up love. <laughs> well, that's nice, too. Yeah. Well, you know, verse two, maybe. What was the question? Garrett, explain WandaVision to Andrew. And Andrew, explain The Bachelor to Garrett. Whoa! LOL. And then in parentheses, in detail. Now, listen. <laughs> the issue, the you don't issue, want to do that. The yeah. issue with bringing up suggestions like this yeah. is that, what is this, a, a seven-hour episode? I mean, that's... <laughs> okay, so, cool. The segment's done. <laughs> so, Andrew, let me tell you this much. It's about a witch, okay? But she doesn't know she's a witch yet. And it's about a witch dealing with grief really intense grief because she's lost everyone that she loves and so it's a show about grief so she makes uh, a, an escape to a land that she creates with her own magic and she basically takes an entire town hostage and she creates the sitcoms of her childhood of the 50s the 40s the 60s the 70s all these different sitcoms and she lives her dream life by mind controlling everyone around her to be characters within the sitcom but really that's wrong because she's holding people literally hostage in a town in New Jersey and she shouldn't be doing that so it's about the struggle by the sword agency to figure out what's happening and why she's doing this thing because she's really powerful and they don't know how to contain it and then it all comes to this head now to get the biggest bang for your buck if yes. you're somebody who doesn't know or doesn't feel invited to the wandavision party because sure. they oh well i haven't seen blah 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 to get the most out of of the show should one have watched all of the marvel movies sure. or at least like most of them or definitely at least a couple because yeah. i think you said something about like oh that's not the best entry into the marvel universe because you're going to be yeah. flipped around or something is it but people you have to be able to watch it in a standalone way because so many people watch it here's the thing anything made that's great any video game any sequel any movie any show that people ask that question to the answer is generally no you don't have to watch anything else because there's a lot of writers that work in incredibly hard to make sure that you can watch that as a standalone property yeah, if you're yeah, interested. Yeah. You could watch it fresh 
it's a little bit of a strange place to start, I'll admit, because you don't have the emotional payoff to knowing her journey, but you still... No, it's a great... Listen, I'm a guy that I say any entry into the Marvel Universe is a magical one. Wherever you want to start, just start, because it's a blast. I adore it. So my obsession with it is because it keeps my imagination absolutely thriving. I yeah. love the Harry Potter universe, the Marvel universe, all these different places that I can live in because I'm a big... Uh, uh, I'm a big on imagination. And so these properties that give me that, I, I love them. Andrew, Bachelorette, how do you best describe that to me? Because you love it. You love it. You show up, you, you, you're there. You're just like me with the Marvel shows. You're there the night up. By the way, Bachelor contestants yeah. watch Sweet Boys. No. I'm telling you the fact, brother. What's a, uh, uh, now shout out the list the, the Bachelorette who watches. How do you know that? How do you know that a Bachelor? Because <laughs> I brought up the Bachelor um, once upon a time. One of the contestants DM me and said, they watch Sweet Boys. No. She watches Sweet Boys. So we got Bachelor <laughs> contestants watching this right now, maybe. <laughs> what do you are you gonna spill and say the name? Yes. But I just <laughs> never do. <laughs> uh, on last uh, season. Piper. That is so exciting. Shout out Piper if you're listening. Anyway, Bachelor. Um, listen, man, this is really <laughs> I'm listening. I love to listen. Although and uh, it's not what my teachers would tell you in my classes. As far as explaining The Bachelor or The Bachelorette, I don't know where to start, really. I want to hear why it's... Andrew Sawicki watches it. Well, so why do you watch this show? Because I know the general principle. Anyone living in America generally knows what The Bachelor and The Bachelorette is. I know what it is. Well, I will say it's entertaining just simply because it just is. It's the nature of relationships, and it's like showing people in a very unorthodox situation. And I think that inherently is interesting because... I, the, 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 here's the only thing you really have to know about these shows that, yeah. as far as why I watch them it's the psychology behind how people are even able to do it you're in a situation where like knowingly mm -hmm. the people that you're weirdly becoming friends with are all trying to be the sole person that the collective crush amongst the group so there's picks. always this tension right well yeah, but it's weird because it doesn't never really seem like there is. Oh I mean, there is gosh. at some point, but especially when they get down to like the final four or whatever, because these girls have been living with each other and they've kind of just, you know, or guys, depending on it's the bachelor. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, Samantha's going going on the date now and they're going to do the fantasy suite date tonight, which means like the cameras aren't even going to be there and it's going to oh. be nighttime. Yes. And they're probably going to do stuff. Oh, wait, freaking kiss. And then they come back. Yeah. And it's just like. Oh, wait. And all the other girls are like, what happened? They don't really ask though because they know <laughs> because they know and they don't want to know. Wait, so this is like the Hunger Games, but all that they want to do instead of survive is kiss a boy. I just don't like if I put myself in that situation. Yeah, I just don't know how I would even be able to be there because because the other thing that doesn't make sense is that you know in 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 the case of the Bachelor, the guy is falling in love yeah. in varying degrees with all these people. And that's something I also don't understand. I I don't really have the I mentally I don't have the capacity. Yeah. To even know what it would be like to fall in love with multiple people at once. Because I feel like once you fall in love with one person, mm -hmm. you're kind of just, at least that's my, not my philosophy, but that's just sort of my perspective. It's like, oh, I love that person. And, and then everybody else goes out of out of focus, right? Oh my but goodness. that's not the case, I guess, because of the way the show's set up. Where yeah. like, you got to talk to all these people and you got to balance it. And then all the dates are different. Can you imagine? Can you imagine being in that scenario? No. Then that's why you watch it because I think it's it's like unfathomably complicated. That's what's funny about it. I just watch it and I just go, "How does this make sense?" Is that I, I turn it on? Yeah. I usually make some popcorn. He healthy, healthy, healthy popcorn. Three hundred calories put for the a whole little bag. Bit of kettle corn on it. Do you, oh, kettle corn. Sea salt. Sea salt. Sea salt. Popcorn. Popcorn. Do you ever? Do you ever? Uh, was that the last thing that made you scream at your television? Was The Bachelor? Like, hey, take that rose, Mindy. Uh, to, uh, grab it from him. Kiss him on the cheek. Like, do you scream at your TV when you're watching The Bachelor? Dude, it's, okay, I'll, I'll close it up by saying this. It's just like, if you're watching The Bachelor okay. specifically, it's like, the guy goes on a date, he has fun, he's staring into this girl's eyes, they're in love, she loves him, oh my gosh, they're exchanging these wonderful moments and conversations and they're dropping their guard down and they're like on this date and they're like falling in love. And then... The girl does the interview and goes, oh, my God, I'm falling in love with I'm him. I'm swept and, 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 off my feet. And then he does his interview, and, she, and he's like, man, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I, I really like her. And it's like, oh, oh, oh. And then the next day comes, and it's just the same thing with another person. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. But it just, it's like, I don't even know how people have the capacity to genuinely jump from one date to the other one and seem to just express the same vibe about Every single person, like every contestant wow. at some point kind of gets, and then it like changes, right? Then he goes, well, I'm, you know, my feelings for this person is like evolving quicker than you. So like, bye. 
But at some point, they're all in contention to win. Oh my god! I just don't understand it. And it, it lets everyone feel like a little, like a little spy, like a little fly on the wall. Just because you can really pick up on those things: what emotions are real, what are fake, what are false, what are this, what are that. You can also because you're getting more data than the guy is in the in the case of the Bachelor. You're getting all the behind the scenes data. I never thought about that. And then that. he doesn't know what's going on, so he's sort of getting this skewed. Um, I I get I dude I actually really understand this. Yeah, like then, the allure of it. That's interesting because you can see the nobility of one of the contestants, you know, sort of behind the scenes and be like, no, they made the smart choices. They're the better person. They're the this, they're the that. And then you have to see when he's headed towards a freaking train coming his way. That is so scary. Because you, you're yeah, seeing yeah. the people interact behind the scenes. You're seeing their intentions. They'll say stuff in interviews. You're like, oh, that's weird. Don't pick her. Yeah. And then, you know, she's like, hi, I'm here. And he's like, I love you. And you're like, wait. Like you describing that, I was like, man, I, I get it. Like, how fun it would be to get with a group of friends and like watch that, like you know, every every week. Well, and the stakes are so high, right? You're talking yeah. about for some reason. There's the, the the other element of the show that I never really understood. Yeah, is that the whole thing is you pick the person and then you propose to them. Okay, but you don't have to. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. It's like we well, don't have to. You know, this last season they, that didn't happen. So I'm like, wait, okay. Can they just date off camera? Yes. <laughs> I know, I know. They don't do the ceremony on screen with like a priest and stuff. They put a lot of, no, I'm not going to say pressure. What if but they, they did like a special though where they get married? Well, that's happened before. No. They incentivize the end of the season to basically be like, I pick you and I get down on my knee and I propose. Oh. Or if it's the bachelorette, this is where it gets, there's been times where, you know, the bachelorette, right? She's, she's picking the person, but she's not the one proposing. So when they do the final two, I've seen this happen before, and it's crazy to be like, why did you let this go on this long? But the guy will get down on his knee, and she's like, here's a thing. <laughs> I'm picking the other girl. So get on this. He on has this. to get up <laughs> off of his little knee. It happened. I, I've definitely seen it once, and she kind of like goes to pick him up. It's The thing is, oh here's the thing. Because she a, has respect for the guy. She loves him to some degree, but she has to go, I love this well, one more. The other, and I don't... I don't know. I mean, they, like I said, they do a good job editing it, so you don't really know exactly what's going to happen. That's the Bachelor Garrett and the Bachelorette. Thank you for the rundown. I think it's great. Emmy underscore Wee. W E E E. Emmy Wee. Oh, oh, so the username. Lady Gaga Oreos. Parentheses, if you haven't had them yet. Guess what? what? Went to the grocery store. Didn't have them. Oh, no. Also took a little gander down the old breakfast aisle. What'd you find? Well, I'll tell you what I didn't find. Wild berry pop tarts. What is happening? There's an extinction, people. There's an extinction happening. Of wild berry pop tarts, and no one's talking about and it. No one gives a hell. <laughs> no one cares. No one cares. I'll find you some wild berry pop tarts one of these days if it's the last thing I do. So here's the thing. Okay. I saw an odd amount of these specific comments that were all talking about okay. the nature of moving. I'd like to hear about moving. I'm thinking about moving and I'm scared. Tay Deck 14's response. Hi, Bessies. Can you talk about your experiences moving out from home slash living from place to place by uh, yeah. L-E-A-N-N-V-P. Sorry, I don't know where the, the syllables break up. Lean Vup. Well, lean to Vup. Hi, Bestie to you. <laughs> yes. And also, uh, I mean, listen, if you, the, the question is, what does it mean to move a lot? Well, there's just a lot of there's just is, a lot is of it just that natural vein? Listen, I think a lot of people are feeling the desire to want to move right now. I know my my uh, podcast co-host that some of you might know named Andrew Sawicki is also feeling that desire. Uh, I I felt that desire very heavily recently, so I did find a new place. But yeah, moving is a really important thing sometimes because a lot of emotions can exist within a physical space, um, and sometimes you can sort of soil a physical space with a lot of like bad ideas. I know that sometimes people can do that. So it's not to say that my last place, this place. <laughs> is soiled in bad ideas mm -hmm. at all. But it was really nice to move. And it's it's a funny thing. And I know I'm going a little bit potentially off the deep end. Off the deep, deep end. end. <laughs> I know it might sound like I'm doing that right now. But in my new place, Andrew, you know this, that sometimes if we talk about something that I find to be a little inherently negative, I'll do like, a, like an actual uh, mental exercise and like cast it out of the place. Like a very kind of like, you know, intentional uh, exercise to make sure that that energy does not reside in my place. So I can definitely understand and in, in the in the era of 2020, people kind of going like, you know what, I want I need to move my physical spaces. So I think it's really important to just um, be really intuitive with it and make sure that you're doing everything within your power to make sure that you're doing the most in your physical space, be it a room that you're renting, a room in your parents' house, a studio you have, a house, whatever your living situation is, that you're doing the most.
most and not putting and not projecting right. sort of grass is greener on the other side idea. Because if you're in a place and you're feeling like it's soiled with a lot of negative energy, there are certain things you can be doing to that space. Opening up windows, cleaning it up, uh, doing emotional exercises like I do and stuff, making more ritualistic things happen in there and going, you know what? The, it was sort of me. It wasn't the space. But sometimes if you really, really just go, no, I get that stuff. I understand. I just need a new space right now. I need to reset. There's also that too. So I, it's a very intuitive choice. Something that I definitely have been learning in the context of this, I think it's applicable generally speaking, yeah. is that uh, something that you said is, yeah, you don't want to be misutilizing your energy and thinking, oh, I feel a certain way. I feel anxious. I feel whatever. Yeah. And then you go, I'm going to put all of that on my living environment. Yeah. Because it's very nice and convenient to do that because then you create this idea of, well, once I eliminate this, then everything is, is going to be, you know, peachy. But it's unfair. A little slippery slope there because I do think about the idea of mm -hmm. moving out into yeah. a place that I, that's like objectively worse on some level mm -hmm. and then kind of finding my groove a little bit and be like, oh, man, I because I've been feeling that lately. I've been feeling better mentally than I have in a long time. Like good. just learning a lot of things, the idea of moving yeah. and then doing that and continuing that and be like, damn, I feel really good. Dude, that and, trust is so important. But then impossibly being yeah. like, damn, I wish I lived in my old apartment because that place was actually pretty nice. <laughs> so, I know. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a complicated thing, but interesting question, Emma We. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know that feeling. <sighs> Hair in my mouth. Sponsorship mode tends to get some hair in your mouth. Sometimes. Hair in my mouth mode. Well, Andrew, it's not hair in your mouth mode. It's sponsorship mode. But did you get it out? Maybe. Maybe. Could be still in there. Can I tell you about something, Andrew? Go ahead. Okay. Sorry. It's okay. Sorry. Well, you remember earlier in this podcast when I told you that I was having a lazy day and I didn't have anything to eat, so I was like eating pizza off the floor and just like whatever I could find in the house? Yes, I remember that. Well, if only I would have had a Green Chef meal. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, and do you know what Green Chef is? Of I course. Do. Well, but what if our what if our listeners don't? Then you could give them a thorough, quick, but still comprehensive breakdown of everything about Green Chef right now. Well, Andrew, it's a meal kit company that makes eating healthy, easy, and affordable with plans to fit every lifestyle. So listen, I'm talking whether you're keto, vegan, vegetarian, paleo, or just looking to eat healthier, there's a range of recipes to suit any diet or preference. And Andrew, anyone who listens to this podcast knows what you do not like to do, and what is that? Go to the go to the stores. He does. Ooh, go to the grocery stores. He doesn't like going to the. He doesn't like going to the grocery store. With Green Chef, you do not have to worry about this horrible scenario happening. You want to know why? You don't even have to go into the grocery store. Ah, uh, mm, that makes sense. Because with Green Chef, you can enjoy clean ingredients that you can trust that are seasonally sourced for peak freshness. <laughs> and as if that isn't great enough, yeah. Green Chef is also the most sustainable meal kit, offsetting 100% of its direct carbon emissions and plastic packaging in every box. So you can feel great, not just about what you're eating, but how it got to your table. I love Green Chef, and they make eating and cooking more fun and healthy and great and affordable and economical and terrific. Facts. <laughs> All caps. Facts. I adore it. I love it. And you know what? If you listening to this go, I want to try Green Chef. Well, you're in luck because you listening or watching right now can go to greenchef.com slash 90 sweet boys and use code 90 sweet boys to get $90 off, including free shipping. Andrew, can you imagine 90 sweet boys, 90 of us? I can barely imagine ourselves. Oh, sorry, that sucked. <laughs> No, I get it. Yeah. That is greenchef.com slash 90 sweet boys and use the code 90 sweet boys to get $90 off, including free shipping. And also to our listeners who know that we sometimes talk about HelloFresh as well. Yeah. Here's the thing. HelloFresh owns Green Chef, so you can enjoy, you can enjoy both brands is what I meant Good. to say. <laughs> <laughs> really though, yeah, 90 good. sweet boys. That's very sweet. Can you imagine $90, 90 sweet That's pretty boys. good. Back to the podcast. Uh, here, listen, I'm just going to say this. Riley Rose, 28, celebrity crushes, exclamation mark. My, my celebrity crush? I'll give you a clue. I wait, 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 no, 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 wait. On three, you're, we're, it's going to go, this is how it's going to do it. Okay. Because I know you have. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you'll be like, we're going to do it on three, and then you say three, and then you. Yeah, yeah. On it's, the it's, actual it's, three? It's, No, 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 it's going to be this. It's going to be one, two, three, then Boom. is. Okay, you ready? Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah. One, two, three, Chloe Michael Fassbender. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we did each other's. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, Chloe Bennett for you and Michael Fassbender for me. Also, this actor named Lee Pace and Ben Wishaw. Oh, we're doing also. I've got okay. a lot of celebrity crushes. Okay. I've got a lot of celebrity crushes. I break out a scroll. I break out a scroll. You break out a scroll, it like hits the floor, like it's like so long. <laughs> and then like it's like out of the door. I know Garrett's uh, type so well Yeah. that I can, sometimes I'm on TikTok. Yeah. And I just send it to him and I'm just like, 
you know, yeah. yeah. You know, or I, sometimes we'll be like walking on the street and someone will walk past and he'll just, I'll just look over him and he'll be like, I know, I know, you want to marry him. It's so weird though. Yeah. It's not, there's no way that I could actually describe it to the camera. Yeah. There's just no way. It's like, like, I, it's I, like I, a, it's, it's like just, a, it's, it's just an energy it's thing. Sort of a gay sixth sense. Are you saying I have a gay sixth sense? By proximity, yes. Haley Joe Osmond Shaker. <laughs> <laughs> I will tweet Haley Joe Osmond Shaker. Baby underscore dot Lynn said to serial debate question. Serial debate. Show, uh, Wait, movie. Seri- uh, there's a lot, there's a lot of things there. Well, the best cereal, uh, without a shadow of a doubt, is probably uh, Captain Crunch, and that's just the way it is. I have a reaction and an opinion about this, about it, even though it's kind of inconsequential and something that doesn't affect you their lives at all. I've got an even stronger reaction that I'm going to shout back at you, and we're going to put it on TikTok and hope that it goes viral. My reaction to your stronger reaction is even stronger than that, and we're going to sit here and wallow in this, even though there's plenty of things in my life that I've neglected that I need to get to in order to feel like I'm an accomplished 30 year old, which is right down the corner. Oh, God. Dream house? Question mark. Dream house? Falling water is the name of it. I don't think I have a favorite cereal Surely because you do. I like. Well, here's the thing. All right, here's the thing. <laughs> I like many a cereal. Oh, I know Fro- one of your favorite cereals, Frosted uh, Wheats. Many wheats. But that's the thing. The reason why I like that cereal is because it's not like crazy sugary, and I don't feel like I'm eating uh, a potential cavity. Which, by the way, yes, I did go to the dentist and I got my cheek checked out. All looks fine. Oh, I'm glad to hear it. How but about this- Oops All Berries? <laughs> Captain, Captain Crunch. Oops. All berries. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. What about uh, Cookie Crisps? <laughs> <laughs> Give me the parameters around what the cereal. Okay. Adult cereal, like grown-up cereal that you know is healthy for you and it's your favorite. Frosted mini wheats. That's good. And for me, that answer is Raisin, raisin Bran. Raisin, and Raisin Bran is yeah. delicious too, especially if you put a little uh, sugar on it. You know, uh, not fake sugar. We're talking about sugar in the raw, the brown packets. Yes. Don't get weird. Don't get weird. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. Me neither. Um, I don't know why I repeated it. Somebody said dream house. If I had a dream house, I don't know how to even answer that for myself. I think I'd have a golf simulator in it. <gasps> Ooh! I think I'd have like a recording studio slash editing bay in it. Like a really oh. big room that was just vibey as all heck. I think I would have an all black bathroom. Whoa. Like, like I want like a bathroom that's just like... Pre- I hate... Really? Dude, I hate bright like... What is that called? The Like the... Subway the, tiles? No, like the white um, like porcelain stuff. I, I, I hate... A bright stuff. I hate it. I got the floaters in my eyes, brother. All oh, we're doing no. with white tile and white subway tile. Yeah. We're giving myself some sort of like really weird fireworks show. Okay? Do, 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 do you Not know? interested in it. Sorry. What's not the, fireworks. Like uh, bugs are flying around. You know the floaters. The I jelly lo- in the uh, eye. Listen, I welcome them. What's the uh, Stranger Things actor? David Harbinger? Harbinger? Harger? Har- David Harbour? I actually don't know at all. The police officer from Stranger Things. Oh, His yeah. bathroom... Is, oh, my, yeah, yeah, yeah. is my dream bathroom. If anyone wants to <laughs> see what my absolute dream bathroom looks like, they could Google David Harbour's bathroom. Here's another. I'm scrolling through there. Yeah. Tay Deck 14. Did I bring this up? I'd love to hear about moving. I'm thinking about moving and I'm scared. LOL. Well, everyone's talking about moving. Well, maybe it's just a transformative period in a lot of people's lives. Yeah. Speaking specifically to the nature of like moving and feeling nervous about that, I would say that Having moved a few places, like going to Nashville, interning for a summer, living there alone, coming out to L.A. and yeah. like, you know doing the whole kind of cliche, going out to L.A. thing, I will say, if you're trying to f- get more information about who you are, and I mm-hmm. think you'd agree, traveling is also in line with that, which is why I want to be traveling more eventually. But yeah, moving and, and hitting the reset, if you feel like you need to learn more about yourself, mm-hmm. I mean, that is like the way to do it because there's nothing like disorienting yourself so much that yeah. you need to basically like learn who you are and then like rebuild yourself from there. Because if you go to a new city, yeah. you're going to feel all the things that are uncomfortable that are going to make you want to go, ah, I'm going back. But the obviously the key there is to stay there and understand what that means for you and then yeah. go, huh. Well, this isn't a bad thing that I feel alone and I feel confused. You said something. This is actually really funny. Mm. You said something really interesting to me. I remember I was living with Ricky, Ricky Montgomery, whose birthday's tomorrow. It already <gasps> happened if you're watching this. Happy birthday, Ricky Montgomery. Here's the thing. I remember living with Ricky in a 300 square foot studio apartment. Yeah. Shout out to Ricky for letting me live there. Red feet. <laughs> That's true. Uh-huh. And I remember I was like, I walked to the library and I was just mindlessly on my computer just trying to figure out what the heck I wanted to do. Yeah. And I saw you coming out of your apartment and you kind of like. We lived in the same apartment building. In, in a really cool way. Not really confronted me, but you sort of like insisted to bring to light the idea of like, oh, you're feeling lost right now. That's what happens for the first six months that you're in L.A. Mm -hmm. You feel weird. You feel confused. You feel turned around. You don't know what you're doing. And it's a very specific feeling that I was feeling in the moment. And I do remember feeling a sense of comfort for being like, yeah, it's a very specific sort of, I really don't feel welcome here. It's not that anybody's mean. It's just like the world and my gut like telling me, not necessarily my gut, I guess my brain kind of telling me, this isn't where you should be. You don't feel right here. And you sort of giving me that assurance of like, oh, 
that's I don't know if you called it something like the LA the LA six. Yeah, they come yeah. down here the six months of you living in LA, not not necessarily establishing exactly what you're doing and all this stuff, and you just kind of feel like yeah. the city's walking all over you because everybody is going to work and doing their thing and doing their project, and you're over there going, I don't know what I'm doing. It's really standard. My friend Pete, for the first six months he lived here, he's a very capable director, but he uh, yeah he was like I just played uh, Call of Duty for the first six months, yeah. super self destructive, uh, stayed inside, only played PlayStation, didn't want to go out, kind of birthed new social anxieties that I didn't even have in my hometown. Yeah. And then he was like, and then one day I realized, what the hell are you doing? And he was like, kind of realized, like, get, like, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. You're going broke. You need to get out there, start networking, start doing your thing. Why did you move to Los Angeles? What are you doing? You know? So, uh, yeah, you can experience that sometimes even many years into living in a city. So, but yeah, but, but it's, it's, it's an important thing to do. And yeah, coming out of, I mean, listen, leaving the nest, there's always going to be that kind of like, whoa, what am I doing? But it can be super exciting. So if you're a young person or honestly, no, screw that. I'm not going to be ageist. Anyone could be experiencing this at any point. If you're a person who's, uh, you could be in your, your seventies feeling this, but yeah, if you're uh, any person right now, who's feeling like you want to mix it up, you could be, you know, a 37 year old manager at a store and going like, I want something else don't be afraid to move to los angeles don't be afraid to move to new york don't be afraid to move to the middle of nature and mix it up you know it's so crazy so many people realize what they want to do in life like pretty close to the end of their lives there's no reason for that sky's the limit there's no rules no one knows what they're doing and when you realize that you can do absolutely anything you want to tread lightly don't do anything crazy irresponsible that's self-destructive and and that goes back like if you have a genuine inclination to go i really feel like i want to move somewhere that's also different that's like a proactive i want to do something not because it's kind of almost like contradicting ourselves from earlier in a in a way yeah like oh like don't don't project all of your issues on your living environment sure go somewhere else and think that that's you're probably gonna solve your problems yeah you have like a genuine intrinsic motivation and interest to go somewhere I feel like you might as well do it because the sooner you do, do you do that, the more feedback you're going to get. I my whole life wanted to be like a talent agent, and the second I entered in a talent agency, there was nothing inherently wrong with it. I just realized, oh, this isn't what I want to do. But the value of experiencing that like, thing yeah. that wasn't it was so valuable. So yeah. sometimes I I moved out here and I was well, just like your agency experience. I worked on a ton of different movie sets and television show sets, and I realized that whereas it was a really fun time and it built a lot of character, I realized that I didn't ultimately want that for myself. Where I'm at right now in my quote life, if you want to call it that, as dramatic as that sounds, it doesn't sound dramatic. Andrew. Where you I'm at in my life, life. Yeah. well, I just feel so not like I don't know, it's dude. The, it's the like, imposter syndrome thing talking whenever I'm speaking from like a place of dude. You're not alone. Everyone feels this way right now. We're all at this place of like we all are just coming off of the weirdest year and a half of well, the entire world's existence. What, well, what, what I was what I was going to say was anyway. I, I I I feel like I'm yeah. aware of now. I've learned there's so many ways to live your life. You can set up your day in a certain way. You can abide by certain principles and rules. There's certain boundaries you can set up for yourself. There's certain activities and hobbies you can do. The balance, the relative balance that you have in your life between yeah. work and this and that and family and people and what type of relationships you want to pursue. All of that stuff is so complex and dynamic and sometimes it's overwhelming and you almost want to regress back to like the path of least resistance. Like I wake up and I do this thing and I'm kind of like a zombie in a certain way. Like mm-hmm. I kind of just do whatever I do and I don't think about it. I mean, you have to have a balance between thinking and overthinking. But where I'm at now is I want to be mindful of how I feel about things and just experience a lot of things, do a lot of things because the more you do and the more you're present for it, the more you can go, I do like that. I don't like that. I do like this area. I don't like this area. I do like that uh, vibe. I do. And I think the more data you get, the more you can go, okay, cool. Now I'm going to start building and crafting my actual life, which I feel like I've yet to do. Yeah. Because when you come out to LA and you're kind of just figuring out what you're going to do and you're just jumping from thing to thing to thing, at what point in there have you consciously made a decision to go, okay, this is what I want my life to look like. You, you, know, you don't. You know what's interesting, Andrew, is I never, I never had this kind of like, I want to live in Los Angeles someday. Yeah. It was never a romanticized thing for me. Um, this is what I think, and listen, I know that sometimes people just have to get out, and that is okay, Jordan Peele. Um, I was going to say that. I don't know what the <laughs> hell is happening anymore. I was going to say, no, no, but the, uh, the idea of uh, sometimes people just need to get out and go to a different place, and so, listen, if that's important, that's important. But I do think that the guiding light and wanting to move sometimes, I, I would say most of the time, generally needs to be and should be, where can I put myself for the most opportunities for me? I knew that I wanted to be in the entertainment industry in some respect. Uh, I thought it was going to be a director at first, and it was important for me to put myself there. So, for instance, let me take myself out of the equation so it doesn't sound so personal. Mm. If, a, if an illustrator goes, I am an illustrator. I love illustrating. I love comic books. I love all that stuff. And there's a really great illustration scene in 
Portland, Oregon. There's so many cool animation houses. I love that. Then that is an awesome thing to move for, to go, I don't care what where I'm at, if what roommate situation I have, if I live with five eccentric people at first, or if I'm broke, I can figure it out, you know. But I just want to be where my where 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 the best or at least a small notion of where I think my future is. That's a cool guiding light. You don't have to have it figured out, but even to know the general bar ballpark you want to be in, I think is enough. So if someone does want to move, I would say make sure it's attached to a little bit of a life purpose, not to be some advice person right now, but like I was okay moving here and having no plan because I was like, you know what? I just know that in Los Angeles, there's a bunch of people creating things. And at the end of the day, I want to create things. And why people move to Los Angeles so prominently is because there's so much creation here, music, animation, uh, illustrators, graphic designers, uh, you know, uh, due to ever everything. So yeah. it's a huge place for that. Well, yeah. And kind of going back to what I was saying earlier yeah. about my, my current uh, p perspective on stuff because I've learned this but it's like you could think that you know who you are and you know what you want to do yeah, and then you could start doing that thing and just be like oh not even close and I just feel like yeah. you cannot possibly grant yourself that awareness without experiencing it like so you know if you feel uh, so compelled to understand yourself more I feel like doing things me and Garrett have a term for it because whenever I'm dealing with something he always says this um going to the source of uh, of something going to the source yeah so yeah if you if you want to do something if you have a creative endeavor if you have an inkling or some stuff going to the source of that and just getting the answer because that's the cool thing about it yeah. you don't have to put it on a pedestal and like you know waste your time and energy you know thinking about it you e could e yeah, yeah even to a certain degree if you like I, I not that I want to start like telling people what to do in this regard but like um, well, no, that is true. Cause I, yeah. I went, I, when I went to go to college, I was just going to get a business degree yeah. and I was like, yeah. And then I took a business class and I was like, I, every time I walked in, I was like, I want to leave immediately. Yeah. And I was staring at the clock. You and went I go, to the oh, why, would I, why, yeah. why would I put myself through this for four years? Yeah. Because ultimately that the best case scenario of that checks off none of the boxes in my life that I want. So, but then I also luckily enough had an intro to psychology class, mm -hmm. um, my first semester of community college. And I loved going in there. I loved listening to this stuff. And I was like, I'm going to double down on this. I'm cool. like, I don't care if, you know, a business degree in some light is more practical or not. I'm like, I'm not going to shine in my life with a business degree. It's just not going to happen. I'm unmotivated. I'm unexcited. I'm not going to be able to use that and propel myself. So the psychology thing, it was like, oh, I enjoy this. I'm going to keep on doing that. I got a psychology degree and I enjoyed it and I liked it. And yeah, I wouldn't have known that about myself unless I, A, hated my business class and B, loved my psychology class. Both of those things only happen if I take the classes. I, yeah. I will say, it's like if you don't know exactly what you want to do, putting yourself in a situation where you can be subjected to so much stuff, yeah. it's like there's really no other way to like, it's just giving yeah. you, that's what I'm saying, it's just giving you data. And it's just like, oh, I hated that. I don't like waking up for that. I don't want to do that thing. I look forward to this. Yeah. You know, um, it's just, a, it's, a, it's an interesting place to start, I would say. And then you could always, you could always stop if you don't want to, I suppose. I think it's important to just understand that the average person gets to where they get to in their own unique way. And there's no right way to do stuff. You say that a lot. Yeah. Um, but yeah, with, with like film directors, they all have their own. Some went to film school, some didn't. And it's like e each of those people, you look at their trajectory, you look at their background, you go, yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You got from point A to point B to where you are now somehow. And when I look at how you did that, I go, yeah, that makes sense. So yeah, I, I, I love, I've always liked that people's career trajectories and like what they went through. Like thinking about like Drake, for instance, he was on Degrassi, right? Yeah. He was on a, it, just, just, just looking back, speaking of Chloe Bennett, you know, Chloe Bennett actually uh, was trying to be a pop star in China for a while. And oh. now she's on Agents Marvel of S.H.I.E.L.D. or was, I think it's, uh, yeah, I think yeah, it's yeah. close. But it's just so funny. I'm like, yeah, whatever you think you should kind of do or whatever feels right, it's just, just do it because you'll, you'll weave out your path. And th there's definitely no right or wrong way to get there. And I feel yeah. like sometimes it's easy to go, well, I'm not going to do anything because I don't know what the right step to take is. I, I ultimately think like just the next step is the right step, no matter what that means to yeah. you. Because you might step on something and go, I don't like this direction. And then you go somewhere completely different and you go, cool, this is the right one. But I wouldn't have got there unless I stepped on that. You know what I mean? Well, and freezing. We're stepping, we're learning. <laughs> freezing is so much easier too. A lot of people don't ever take that you know step because it's just so much easier to stay comfortable and you know people stay in jobs for 10 20 30 years at a time because they don't want to take that first step when really it's super super valuable too how about the sweet treats andrew how many pillows is too many for a bed a thousand um <laughs> yeah there's no, yeah but just give me i don't even need a bed just give me pillows okay rapid fire yeah okay here's the thing i was in pursuit of a couple items because this is what we do now <laughs> in pursuit of a couple items sounds like me in beverly hills um i went looking for a couple of items <laughs> 
<laughs> at the grocery store. Didn't find didn't find any of the things that I was looking for. Oh no! But see, I don't know what I'm even saying anymore. Wow, this, All I'm saying okay. is, I went to the grocery store and I was looking for a couple of things, limited edition things. One of them may or may not have been pretzel pop tarts. What? <laughs> yeah, Target didn't have them. Liars oh. website said it did. In pursuit of them, I I got some uh, co consolations for us. Okay, I'll close my eyes and you pull it out. <laughs> Sounds like me with Melvin in 1976. <laughs> you are. Stop referencing Melvin. <laughs> Here we go. I'll spread them out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to throw my microphone against I something. I didn't say anything. All right, here we go. <laughs> I'm so excited to see what it is. I'm going to lay them all out, though. Tell okay. me when I can open up my eyes. Okay. Wait, put one in my hand, and I'll try to guess no, what it's it not, is. It's, it's multiple things, and just, we got to do just, rapid fire. Okay, then I'll try to guess what one is. Just, just put one in my eyes. Eyes closed, and okay, it's a spread. And eyes are it, no, just do one in my hand. No, 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 no. I'm going to show the audience what they are. Okay, you're seeing this for the video <laughs> listeners. Garrett, don't open up your eyes. I won't your ever eyes. open up my eyes. All right. I've showed the video uh, viewers all of the treats. We're going to rapid fire through this. And audio We're going to give you yeah. the sweet rating, the sweet review, the, the world's most coveted review system, <laughs> which gives the insight that goes beyond anybody's perspective ever, and that will definitively dictate whether or not you should or shouldn't and will or will not. Purchase these items for your own enjoyment. Should I keep my eyes closed? In about 10 seconds, I want you to look at the items and then give a quick rundown of each of them verbally, since I've already done it visually. Sounds and then good. we're going to get into it, and we're each going to rate each of these items, and okay. then they'll go into the SBU uh, Sweet Review Archive. Tell me when I should do this. Do this now. Okay, I'm looking at Oreos. I'm looking at the lemon-flavored flavor cream Oreos. They're yellow. They're more yellow than the middle of the sun. I'm also looking at Peeps. Hot tamale, fierce cinnamon Peeps made of marshmallows and hot tamale, fierce cinnamon. I'm also telling oh, you, Andrew. Why did you say that none of these were exciting? Well, I don't know. Because oh my God, I'm taking a look at Twinkies, but guess what? They're not flavored with normal cream. They're flavored with cotton candy cream. And as if that's not the most exciting thing I've ever seen in my life, I'm also looking at Pringles and they're honey mustard flavored. Makes a little more sense for the lukewarm one. But these other ones are absolutely incredible. Well, well I don't know about the lukewarm one. You, you, I brought this up on an episode before and you, you freaked out, brother. I, I, well, listen, I'm- you, I'm These a, are hard to find. I'm a very I inconsistent person when it comes to things. These are harder to find than Wildberry Pop-Tarts. Not true. These are harder to find than a man with a job. <laughs> a a guy writer. with a job? I don't know. Just period? I was trying to There's bit, no like, limit? It, you, it, you, it, it, that's it, it, harder it was, to find you know, than a guy who a, makes seven mm, figures? Harder to find than a guy with his own Lamborghini, and that's my standard. I don't know. <laughs> okay, wait, 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 wait. Lamborghinis. Lamborghinis are bad. You no, know, the rapper of the game tweeted today that the Lamborghini was the worst purchase of his career. Anyway. Really? Here's the thing. Wow. I wanted to give the lemon flavor redemption, a shot of redemption here. Because <laughs> <laughs> of our bad lemonade Pop-Tarts. Uh, yeah. Underwhelming, I would say. Bad. Okay. So the rapid fire element, I think we're going to eat it, and we're just going to give a quick little response. Okay. Um, okay. Garrett's eating the lemon po uh, uh, lemon Oreo. Lemon Oreo. But he's trying it. He's looking, you know. Oh, whoa. Weird. Okay. I don't know how to explain what he's doing. Let me give you a quick rundown. Okay. 11 out of 10. Wait. <laughs> Sensational. I'm in the Florida Keys. I'm loving it. Gorgeous. Amazing. You don't rate it until I try it. Oh, sorry. Emotional reaction off the charts. I love it. I'm oh, back sorry. in my childhood. I'm having a great time. It's delicious. It's mm -hmm. incredible. It reminds me of seven different desserts, lemon bars, sunshine, wow. gorgeous, amazing. Baby. No artificial flavor vibes, nothing creepy, only oh. good. You want to hear Our a crunch? Are lemon Oreos something that's new? No. Have you had them before? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I don't really like lemon tart flavors. I don't like mixing fruit with desserts. I feel like that's just like a weird, regressive thing. It's like, give me a smoothie or what give about, me like- What about strawberry shortcake? No. You don't love it? I don't even like pumpkin pie. <gasps> no, I don't like anything. Like, it, Give me a birthday cake. I, no I, I pull out a birthday cake. Okay. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? I don't like, because it's like, let's have a smoothie and eat some fruit and be healthy, or let's have a dessert and say we don't really care about anything. I love it all, guy. Well, I know, but I will say, dude, these are really good. Mm. You're, so your rating's 11 out of 10. Mm -hmm. I feel like you're 8.7. I'm going to give these a 7.15. Absolutely incredible. Yeah. That's a really fair rating. Now, <gasps> Cotton Candy Twinkie. Give it over here. I was never a Twinkies fan. Like, mm -mm, you know, I mm -mm. never... Listen, if I wanted to host a snack, you know what it was? Every single time it was a zebra cake. Yeah. Zebra cakes or Star Crunch are the only, are the most those are like the alpha hostess treats. I never craved a Twinkie, but you tell me they're cotton candy flavored, which is one of my favorite artificial flavors. I am in nut butter. Oh yeah, so good. You want to split one? Nope. <laughs> I don't like Twinkies really. There there is a world where I could see this being not great though. I, I really can. Like I can see this being kind of a fail, or I could see it being the best thing that's ever happened to me. Oh yeah, you try it first this time. Oh, I'm so excited. I'll narrate uh, how he looks doing it. Oh. Damn, he like he's going somewhere. He looks like an Olympian about to dive into the pool after like 17 years of training. 
Okay, he's cleansing his palate. He's making weird sounds. Yeah. Go on. <gasps> this, oh, he's crunchy. He's, he's, he's tasting. He's, <laughs> there's no way to describe a Twinkie and make it sound like anything other than exactly what it is. Oh, he's munching on it. Oh, he went back in hard. That makes me think that he like kind of liked it. He like, damn. There's something in there <laughs> that tastes exactly like something very specific. Oh, like I can pinpoint the date on the calendar. I can help you figure out the mystery flavor. <laughs> no, you know, it's like an it, it tastes more like an idea than it is an actual thing. <laughs> <laughs> this is spooking me out. What is that? Show yourself. <laughs> Weird. This tastes like yeah. This tastes like 1990, like seven or eight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. I just got a little aromatic aftertaste of a of a cotton candy. Oh, wait, okay. what is that? I don't know. You know what I'm talking about, though. Oh, whoa! You're right. What that's is that? So funny. Come at you, son of a bitch. Whoa! Show yourself. Yeah, that's show it. What is it? I think the sugar might be getting to me a little bit. What the hell? I'm not even kidding you right now. This is this is this is poking my brain in the most like ha ha ha. You'll never guess it way I'll ev I ever. Uh, what the heck? <laughs> me just using this mystery as an excuse to eat like. <laughs> Five of them over here. Yeah, I gotta figure it out. This, this is insane. I can't believe this like mystery on the edge of both of our minds. <laughs> My podcast sucks. <laughs> what is this? I don't know. Okay, I've eaten two and I still don't know. I should chill. I'm gonna go five point just because I don't know how to rate this. It's just so. Can I tell you what I'm gonna go with this? Thirty one grams of sugar. I'm gonna go seven point six because the mystery was so fun. Like it, it was more fun than the flavors. If 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 you see cotton candy Twinkies in this store, I would say buy them and help us figure out this mystery, not sponsored, of what they taste like because yeah. there's something happening. Okay, Andrew, I'm gonna I'm gonna try the the honey mustard Pringles. Uh, you have you ever tried these before? Never. Do you like honey mustard? I love it. Do you like Pringles? Yeah. Okay, this is you're a perfect candidate for the rating. They <laughs> they smell just like salt and vinegar, which is funny. Interesting. Um, well, well, you got to This one speaks immediately. They could be zestier, but they're amazing. Oh, wow. It would be cool if they bit a little harder. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like me with Frederick. <clears throat> Sorry. But they really they could they could be a little bit more like <laughs> but they're not. <laughs> I think the lemon Oreo and cotton candy Twinkie might be throwing off my taste buds. <laughs> Why? <laughs> it cut to us like it's still lingering in our mouth. What is this? And then like trying to rate something immediately after. <laughs> like while well, it's still lingering on all of our taste buds. I, I listen, listen, brother. Okay. When I was younger, okay, all I would get chicken tenders. Was chicken tenders. Chicken fingers, whatever, and always we get honey mustard. I've had more honey mustards in my life than and I have no idea how to make it. In they were like, let's make it like a honey mustard vibe. Is there honey vibes? Is there mustard vibes? Yeah, faintly. These should be called uh, honey mustard. Okay, <laughs> honey mustard Pringles. All right, trust us. <laughs> this should be called honey mustard. You believe me, don't you? <laughs> honey mustard Pringles. We'll try another one. <laughs> No, it should be called Honey Mustard Pringles. Like, wait, wait, wait. wait. Just, wait maybe you didn't get a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Honey Mustard Pringles. Tr try them again. Try them again. <laughs> <laughs> Honey Mustard Pringles. Uh, maybe there was like a thing in the factory where like, they didn't put up seasoning. <laughs> 6.5. Two eight for the for the honey mustard Pringles. Four point nine. They're just not that confident. No, no, but that's the thing. So in the context of Pringles, no Pringle jumps out in front of you and goes, "I'm here." Yeah, Cheddar does. Mm, you're right. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess for me, it, it, it embodies what I like about a Pringle because I like to just, you know, when you eat Pringles, it's like, listen, what are we doing here? We're eating the whole can. I like the color. Yeah, it matches your aesthetic. Leave it. Yeah, Blend that's in. true. One of the comments on the podcast said, Garrett's just slowly becoming the couch. And I was like, <laughs> hurry, Andrew, give me the hot tamale peeps or I'll freak out. Andrew, put them in my hands. Mm. Let's get a nice, uh, fiery, spicy peeps palate cleanser. <laughs> Garrett's open up with the peeps, the hot tamale peeps. Look at them all in a row. <laughs> Wait, huh? these are really funny. You ever put peeps in a microwave and watch their oh. little souls leave their body? Whoa. I put a peep in my mouth. I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tell oh you this. Oh my one. god! Yeah, they got what they were going for. This is the most. This is. They did it. Do I like this? No. Is it like exactly what it should taste like? Yeah. That is the perfect review right there. If you like hot tamales and you like peeps, you are in for the treat of your lifetime. For what they tried for, it's a 9.7. My final rating personally is like, yeah, like 6.6. .6. <laughs> you know what? I'm yeah. going to just say 6.6 .6 as well because I was yeah. going to say 6.7 and I like the idea of us having a completely uh, identical rating on that. We got to say the outro, brother. Or we got to say the outro.
I think this is the most destructive anyone's ever seen us on this podcast. We hope you had a fun time with us, <laughs> going from talking about very like you know decent normal things to then doing the most uh, pointless mess of a charade of an uh, activity. I love brown sugar cinnamon pop tarts. <laughs> Are you okay? Check us out on Spotify and Apple and anywhere else you listen to podcasts if you want to ever listen to this. <laughs> and if you want to watch it, youtube.com slash sweetboys. You can follow us on Twitter at sweetboys. Also, we're always in the comments. If you want to... Comment what your favorite piece of junk food is. Yes. I got to pee. Well, but say the thing before you go. Until next time, everybody out there in the SPU, we thank you so much for being around here. That's and, Sweet Boys uh, Universe, by the way. Sweet Boys Universe. Please. Please. If you like. Be sweet. And see you next week.